Hey everybody, today I'm going to be teaching you how to get your secret ID in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and I'm also going to be teaching you how to do your first overworld RNG for a static uh, uh, encounter. So before we get started, I'm going to go over the things that you both need in-game and out-of-game. So out-of-game, you're going to need um, a program on your computer called Sword and Shield Overworld RNG GUI by LEGO Figure 11. You're also, you don't need it necessarily, but I highly recommend having a turbo controller. I've got this controller by Ghoulie Kit. It was recommended to me by Greeny Fay. Uh, it's a really, really good controller, and it acts as a pro controller, which leads me into the next thing, uh, because it lets you uh, remap your buttons, which I also think is pretty important. So if you go down into uh, controllers and sensors and see change button mapping here, I have swapped R3, which is pushing in on the right stick here, with the button Y. And I'll explain why I've done that later, but I also highly recommend doing that with like a pro controller if you have the ability to remap buttons. Uh, so that is everything you're going to need out of game. In game, you do not need much. Uh, you need to have a Pokemon in your party. <laughs> so if we take a look at my wall rain here, I'm going to show this guy as an example. So the way you do this RNG is you find your initial seed. And you find your initial seed by looking at the summary of a Pokemon and pushing in on the right stick. Or in my case, I'm going to be hitting the Y button because I've swapped Y with the right stick. And it will cause the Pokemon to do a little animation. So you can see Walrein did an animation. Now, every Pokemon has two different animations. So there's Walrein's other one. These occur randomly. So now I'm just going to start mashing the button. You'll see that there's not going to be any particular pattern to it. This is how we determine what our initial seed is. We watch the pattern, we input the sequence into the program, uh, the Sword Shield Overworld RNG GUI, and then it will tell us what our initial seed is. From there, we can do advances and other things to figure out uh, what, our, what our, our seed is and what Pokemon we can hit, etc., etc. I'll get into more of that later, but for now, you just need to understand how to find your initial seed. So, what I'm going to do... Uh, what I'm going to do is find my seed right now with all of you. So if we take a look at Sword Shield uh, Overworld RNG GUI, you can ignore literally everything here when you're trying to find your seed. Just click the Seed Finder button, and then a big Seed Finder window is going to pop open. Now, if you notice in the Seed Finder window, it has zero physical and one special. So the Pokemon that you use for this, I recommend being a Pokemon that you can easily tell what is different between physical and special. So if we take a look at Walrein here, that was the special animation. That's when he would shoot Ice Beam or something like that. And this is the physical animation when he would do something like Body Slam. Not every Pokemon is going to have such an easy tell. So it's one of Pelipper's. And that's other Pelipper's. You see, those are also both pretty easy to tell. That's probably physical. That's probably special, but that one is not so easy to tell because it looks like a Golisopod here is... It, both of them are claw swipes. Yeah, it's kind of easy to tell, but, you know, it's not the easiest. So, I, I recommend, you know, figuring out w which one works for you. And if you're unsure of what an animation is, you know, you could test it by going into battle and watching what animation plays when you pick, like, Ice Beam or when you pick Body Slam or something like that. The Pokemon you use doesn't matter. All that matters is that you are capable of figuring out pretty easily the difference between physical and special because it gets pretty tedious because you have to do this 128 times. So I'm going to hit the Y button and take a look. So that was physical. That was special. And we just have to do it. This is extremely boring, but uh, I find remapping the button is very, very helpful because it lets you push it a lot faster uh, and it lets you like not have to fiddle with the controller to hit R3 or what have you, anything like that. And like I said, you have to do this 128 times, which is a lot of times, but luckily there is no skill, there is no timing. You do not have to be precise. You don't have to do anything. You just have to make sure you input every single one of these. You just have to make sure you input every single one of these animations that Walrein is doing.
As you can see, I'm almost done. And I've got a seed here. So once you've found your seed, you can click update main form and it will send your seed over to here and you can start searching for shinies or good eyed bead Pokemon or specific marks or any combination of the three. Now, here's the downside to what's going on right now. Well, if you want a shiny, you need your secret ID. But finding your secret ID, it, you can't RNG it like you can in earlier gens. So what you're going to have to do is find a shiny, and then the program uh, has a feature here that says search for trainer ID and secret ID to where once you catch a shiny, if you immediately find your seed, it can calculate backwards to figure out what seed you hit the shiny on and what your trainer ID and secret ID are. So we are going to do that now. So in order to figure out our secret ID, we're going to have to hunt for a shiny the old-fashioned way. Now, if you are not interested in a shiny uh, after watching the initial seed portion of the video, if you don't care about getting shinies or anything like that, you don't have to do this. You can skip to the end of the video where I show how to RNG manip a static encounter in a quiet area. Now, with that being said, if you are interested in RNG manipping shinies, well, what you're going to have to do is first catch a shiny. And it can't just be any shiny that you have lying around. You basically have to catch a shiny and then immediately after go into your summary and find your current seed, uh, just like we did a, a moment ago. And that kind of sucks because, you know, finding a shiny can take a while, but it's okay. Um, what we're going to be doing is the fishing method. Now, if you don't know how to do this, I'm going to link a Twitter thread by uh, Anubis on Twitter. I believe they are the one who discovered the, like, the fishing method. But basically, here is the long and short of how it works. It stacks two different chances on top of each other. The more you KO a Pokemon, which can be seen by your uh, Pokedex. So if you go into your Pokedex... And you take a look at the number battled stat. So you can see here, Choodle, I have battled 111 of them. Uh, that, if a Pokemon is brilliant in the overworld, which has the yellow glow over it. If a Pokemon has that yellow glow around it, then uh, it will have an increased shiny odds based on how many of them that you have KO'd. In addition to that, the more successful reel ins and hooks from fishing that you get... Uh, the higher chances you have of a brilliant spawning. So if I if I do fishing here, what we have to do is hook the Pokemon as soon as we can. And then all we have to do is KO the Pokemon. So we have a Choodle here, and we just have to KO it as soon as we... Or we just have to KO it right away, basically. Now, if you do this, the fishing puddle will uh, respawn immediately. And you will be able to fish again. This is the only way to keep the fishing chain going. And so the higher odds, uh, or the, the more fishing chains that you do, so it's going to come back. The more consecutive fishes you get in a row, the higher chance of a brilliant spot forming. And it caps out at 25 real ends, right? Then... The more KOs you have on various Pokemon, so you don't have to KO, you know, 100 Choodle in a row. You don't have to KO 100 Aerocuda in a row. You don't have to KO 100 Magikarp in a row is who everything can spawn. It's just in total how many of them you have KO'd. Their odds of being shiny goes up uh, in the brilliant spots only. So if we keep doing this, we will keep getting the higher odds of a brilliant spot. And the more Pokemon that we KO from this fishing puddle here, the higher odds of them being shiny while they are brilliant uh, will appear. And this is nice because, yes, you can fish, you know, this way. You can fish for a shiny in this spot. But it will also increase any potential overworld shinies that you have. So what I'm going to be doing is fishing in this spot until, uh, until I run out of PP on all of my Pokemon. Uh, and also make sure that you have some Pokeballs with you in order to catch the shiny. Then I'm going to go back to the Poke Center nearest to where I am right now. And then I ride my bike back down to here. And that's that's pretty much what I do. And the reason I ride my bike back down to here is because there are some overworld Choodle that will spawn. And you're going to be seeing a lot of Choodle in this fishing spot as well. And so I'm going to be just doing a little bit of that and hoping to get a shiny basically as soon as I can.
So after chaining for a while, uh, you know, I've gotten, you know, a lot of KOs on different Pokemon, all the Magikarp, Barracuda, and uh, Chewdles here. Uh, one of the reasons I like this spot is that it is close to a Poke Center on the map. Uh, and so on the way back from the Poke Center, I can, you know, heal my guys and then I can ride down. And because there's Chewdle Overworld uh, spawns, uh, they are also going to be potential shinies as well if I see them as brilliants. So it cannot hurt to, uh, it, it, it cannot hurt to, you know, bike back instead of flying to a Poke Center flying back. It just gives me a few more encounters to check. Uh, and ultimately, that is where I'm going to be finding my uh, shiny, which is on the way back here. So I had had a lot of Choodle KOs, and I'm going to ride down here, and I'm going to see a brilliant Choodle. So you can see there's lots of Choodle spawning all along this path. I see several of them, and oh, a brilliant one, and I'm going to pop in and see that it is shiny. And so this little creature here, this little guy, I can use him in order to figure out what my secret ID is by immediately checking uh, what my seat is. So I'm going to catch it as soon as I can, and then after that we're going to go into the summary. So now all we have to do is immediately find our seed. We're going to need to figure other things out about Choodle later, uh, but we just need to figure out our seed right now. So I'm going to go to Walrein, and I'm going to show you the initial seed finding process. Okay, so we've just caught Choodle, and now I have to uh, find my current seed after it. Now, it is just like we did before when I was in the Dynamax Cavern, um, where all, all you have to do is you know do the the physical special thing 128 times and you will be able to find your uh, seed that way so you know it, it's nothing skillful right it's just clicking the button watching your pokemon picking the animation you just have to repeat that uh and do it 128 times uh and uh, there's nothing much else to say about that i'm gonna leave the video here in terms of you know, me getting it done, uh, and then searching for the Choodle afterwards, but, uh, there, there is nothing unique about this compared to what I've already explained. So, once we have found our seed from the seed finder section, we are going to try and figure out what our secret ID is. Now, there's a few different check boxes you're going to need to, to check in order to figure out what's going on, but luckily a few of them are going to be very easy to fill out. If you have the shiny and mark charm, make sure those are checked. I do not have either of them. Then what you're going to do is check this search for TID SID box. Okay. Now, for static, ours was not a static. Ours is considered a symbol encounter, which is just the standard Sword and Shield random overworld spawns. Um, <clears throat> so it was not static. The weather was normal for where I was, so if it was for you, also don't check. I don't even know if any random weather can happen on the route that we were doing it on. Uh, I did not get mine via fishing. I got mine via overworld, but if you were fishing, click that. Uh, it wasn't hidden, which I believe are those little exclamation point guys. Uh... Random held item, we can we can figure out if it's got that. Uh, and then shiny locked and Q charm lead, I didn't have either of those. We'll come back to random held item in a second. Then for the KO count, what you can actually do is go into your Pokedex and check the Pokemon that you just caught. So I, again, had caught a Choodle. So if we see it had 111, right? It said numbered battled. That is just actually how many you KO'd, not how many you, uh, like, caught or whatever. So it's going to be that. Now, for slot and levels, what you're going to do is click this Encounter Lookup button. Then you're going to type the Pokemon you're looking for. So I'm looking for Choodle. So it should show up right here. And then it's going to show up all of the little guys that I've got. So it is not a static. So what we're going to be looking for is the route that we were on. I was on Route 2, All Weather, and it was Symbol. Uh, so Symbol is the overworld. Static are the, the mods that kind of they stay there. You know what I mean? But we're going to click uh, this here. 
and then this is going to auto fill out this uh 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 it's going to auto fill out this this information here now i'm going to uh click x out of that i'm going to uncheck weather because there was no weather uh and you can see it will it will uh, it contain that information uh, you know, the encounter slots, the possible EMs, the levels, etc., etc., right? And if it has the possibility for a random held item, again, if we if we take a look at Chudel again, uh, it says false, right? Um, so, <clears throat> uh, it would have it would have been there. Uh, now, the weather checkbox is is not going to be, you know, it's not going to, it's going to check it because it is possible for there to be other weathers and it could be in weather, but uh, uncheck it so we're, we're gonna we're gonna leave it like that and it fills out all this info for you automatically which is super nice then for the stats what we can do is if assuming you have the judge feature unlocked all you have to do is go into your boxes and take a peek at the pokemon and use the judge stats so i'm gonna do best then i'm gonna do decent and decent and then very good and two bests So we got all the stats input properly. For its nature, you can just check the summary. Uh, it was timid. Uh, for shiny, ignore because TIDS ID. Uh, mark, uh, I don't believe I had any marks on mine. I did not, so you do ignore. For brilliant, if yours was in a brilliant aura, uh, select it. If it wasn't, select none. So I was in a brilliant aura. And then... After you've got all of this information properly configured to your specifications for what you caught, um, hit search. And you're probably going to get several results. And if you don't get any results, you could increase this advances here, but you're probably not going to have to as long as you brought up the pause menu right away. Now, you'll notice that there's two options for my trainer ID and secret ID. So it, it, you can see there, there's several different options here in general, um, but... It's okay because they're just like duplicates. Uh, it looks like there was a little mini cluster. So on 90, 199 or 201, I could have had, you know, different Pokemon. So let's take a look here. So um, the first one here is uh, 199 frames earlier with the TID SID of 55461 and 53969. Now the animation, what that means is if you paused immediately and there was no surrounding noise uh like what this animation would have been that's not going to be super useful for us uh, it'll tell you what level it was so level seven now brilliant pokemon always spawn at the max level so it's not super duper helpful here uh slot was the chudel we we already pre-configured our slots um nature we pre-configured ability uh, they're all the same ability but the big difference here is if you take a look is there's two genders there's female and male and our choodle is a girl so uh, because these are the only two secret id and tid combos even though you know most of the rest of it looks the same right it's just you could sometimes get two or three shiny frames in a row uh and it, it could have been either one of these right uh and because this choodle is a male here uh, we know that this could not possibly be our trainer ID and secret ID, and so it must be 55461 and 53696. Now, if you do have, let's say these were all females for whatever reason, if you do have somehow potential multiple options, all you're going to have to do is just check for a shiny on both of the trainer IDs, uh, and whichever one shines will be the one that your um, will be the one that your target was on. With that being said, let's get underway to checking the trainer ID and secret ID by actually doing the RNG manip. Okay, so to do our first RNG manip where we test to see if our secret ID that we have obtained is correct, what we're going to be doing is flying to the slippery slope in the crown tundra. This is an area where it is fully quiet. Basically, there is no random advancements, right? Lots of areas have random advancements. And a lot of people ask what I mean by that when I say noise or random advancements in a video. Basically, when we go into the menu here, there's no RNG advancements happening, right? The game only calls them when it needs them. <clears throat> and so when I, you know, go into the summary and I hit the button that causes a random animation to place, the RNG advances by one, so it can pick the animation, and it will do that repeatedly, right? However, in lots of instances, 
your character standing still and maybe doing their wiggle animation when that calls. That's random. Uh, in most cases, weather can also cause random advancements, although snow is an exception to the rule. Uh, random NPCs blinking or turning or having different idle animations, all of those can also cause random noise. So in here, there is some level of random advancement because there are random particle effects, there's random NPCs blinking, doing different idle animations, stuff like that. And so what we want to do is be in a fully quiet area where there is no chance of NPCs messing with us or any random noise happening. And right out here, if you just fly to Slippery Slope, you're going to get no random noise at all, which is perfect for a test like we need to do. Now, in addition to that, when you walk straight ahead, a Pokemon will spawn. And that is this little guy right here. It, it, it'll be different for you. There's two Pokemon, actually. There's another one right over here. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is aiming for the Pokemon that spawns first, which is whatever Pokemon is usually in this Amora's spot. So as you can see, I'll walk over here again, and Amora will show up. Now, this is Amora is a static encounter, and these static encounters, they change. Uh, I believe they change at midnight, and they also respawn at midnight. So yours is going to be, you know, whatever, whatever else, but, you know, it, it, could, it could be a, a, a ton of different things. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is finding our seed and then trying to get a shiny Amora to confirm our secret ID was correct. Now, when we are here, there are a few different things that can cause RNG advancement. Uh, and I'm going to talk about what they are uh, and it, how we can advance. So this little idle animation here, this is an RNG advance. This won't happen while the menu is paused or anything like that. Getting on and off the bike does some amount of RNG advancements. So this is these are ways to cause advancements to happen faster. If I had turned around and I went back into there and I just waited uh, in the Dynamax Adventure Cavern, that will also cause some amounts of RNG advancements just passively over time. These are all ways to move the RNG forward once we know exactly what we're able to do. And in addition, one of the most useful ones is here. Now, as you, if you notice, when I hit the button to cause the animation, it'll happen here as well. The reason we don't find our seed on this screen is because um, the reason we don't find our seed on this screen is because every single time you hit it, so you can see I'm mashing Y here to cause these animations. It actually advances one for every single time I hit the Y button, which is crazy. Uh, and this is one of the you know easier ways to do advancements, and that's why I recommended a turbo controller because what I could do is hit the button and hit Y at the same time. So I've hit my turbo button and Y at the exact same time. You can see I'm not holding anything, and it is just mashing the Y button. Uh, I forget the rate that it's mashing this at. You would have to figure it out. You'd have to do another test again to see how many advancements you do. But if you're trying to do really far advancements, this is very, very, very useful for you. Okay, so with those methods of advancement down, what we're going to do is find our seed using wall rain as I like to do. So I'm going to click the seed finder button. And we are going to find our seed. So we, this is just like I talked about before, and just like we did during, uh, you know, both the beginning of the video and during the um, the finding our seed after we got a shiny. So we just have to, you know, get all of the physical special stuff going on here. Here we go. Special. Physical. All right, so I have found my seed. Again, all I'm doing is hitting physical when it plays the physical animation and special when it hits the special animation. I'm going to click update main form. Now, make sure you type your trainer ID and your secret ID that you found into the TID SID box. If you have the shiny charm or the mark charm, check those boxes as well. You can leave initial advances and, you know, uh, the plus advances, you know, you could leave that blank. You could leave those as they are default. Then, because we are going for a static encounter, click static. Now, everything else here, we're going to leave. Make sure you don't have uh, a cute charm lead ability and that the Pokemon isn't shiny locked or anything like that. Then what we're going to do, ignore everything else here. We're just confirming our secret ID, right? So we, we don't want to care about anything else here. We could get into the more, you know, picky stuff when we're, we're, we're actually going for our shiny. But what we want to do right now is confirm that we have a shiny. So in the shiny box, there's a few options. There's no, which means don't get a shiny, don't even try. Then there's square, then there's star, and then there's star slash square, which means I have no preference for star or square, which is what we are going to pick. 
then what we're going to do is hit search. So as you can see, there is a square shiny 5,000 advances away. This is extremely far. <laughs> this is going to be, you know, this is going to be quite the wait. So what we can do to advance our, you know, what we can do to, to advance the frames, I've talked about a number of ways, right? We could either have it spamming the turbo button here, or I could get on and off of my bike or something like that, right? So what I'm going to do is I think the fastest way is going to be to walk into here. And I'm going to wait. I'm going to set a timer. And I'm going to wait for one minute to see how many advances are going to occur in this place. All right, so the minute's up. I'm going to walk back out. I'm going to pause, and I'm going to go over to my Pokemon. Now, what I'm going to do is go back into the Sword and Shield Overworld RNG GUI, and I'm going to... You see there's Retail Advances Tracker. It says 0 to 10,000. There's no way we advance 10,000 frames. So I'm going to click Generate Pattern. Now what we can do is do our input sequence for our wall rain to see what our current our current position is. And we're going to do the input uh, you know, input sequence here. It says 0 is physical and 1 is special. So let's do that. So that's 0. 0. 0. 1. So as you can see, it says possible results. are They're going to go down every time. So that was zero again. So there's 315 possible results. we got to keep going. There's one. There's one. There's one. If you notice, every time I do an input, it drastically shrinks the amount of results remaining. Zero again. One. One. One, zero, zero, zero. So now we know, uh, now we know exactly how many advances. So one minute in there was 235 advances. So we can click update states here and it'll send it all the way back over to this. And then if we do another search for a static shiny, you could see, uh, you can see it's down to 5,026. So we could go in there and we could wait for a while or we could do something else, right? So what I'm going to do is do it again. So we're going to hit generate pattern again. And we're going to do zero. Click generate pattern. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is do the bike to see how many advances the bike is going to occur. All right, so let's check wall rain again. Uh, so as you can see, the bike advanced around 20. So getting on and off the bike, it's not going to be super duper efficient. Now, what I could also do is do the button presses, you know, over here via the uh, via the thing. I don't think it's going to be as fast as the... Um, I don't necessarily think it's going to be as fast as uh, the, uh, like my turbo. I don't think it's going to be as fast as waiting in there. It could be, but we, we could check it. There's no reason not to, right? So we're going to delete that and then click generate pattern again. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is uh, hit Y and my turbo button. All right. So now it is going and I'm going to set a one minute timer. So I'm going to stop my advances after the minute has passed, and we're going to go back in and we're going to check. So, uh, like I said, we've generated the pattern, and let's see what this is. One. So it looks like that actually advanced a little bit faster. That was at 362 advances in about a minute. So we can click update states here. And so, as you can see, if I do a search here, we only have 4,000 uh, frames left. And if you also notice that I've actually got two shiny frames in a row, which are which is pretty nice. Now, we are going for an Amora who, you know, it's not like it's the best Pokemon, so it's fine. You can see that from time to time you will get clusters like this where there's like one or two or three frames in a row or something like that. I think that, you know, they tend to be the best to aim for. Uh, but what we're going to do is go back uh, over here and let's figure out how long I'm going to have to wait here. So four, six, four, one. Uh, so we're going to aim... 
for that. So if it's 362 advances in about a minute. So let's get a calculator open. All right, so we got the standard Windows calculator here. So we advanced 362 in one minute. So 362. Plus 362. So and if we just do that, so that's two minutes, three minutes, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. So we could do 13 minutes is going to be too far. We could do like 12 and a half minutes. I don't want to overshoot it. So I think we will do that. We'll go for like 12 and a half minutes and then we'll figure out where we are at. So yeah, it's a long wait. And you could instead reset. Uh, you could reset your game and not have to wait that long. But I, I think this is fine. And if you don't have a turbo controller, just walk into the walk into the Dynamax uh, Adventure Cavern right there. And that was 268, you know, per second or whatever, right? Uh, so I'm going to do that. And now when I hit Y, it's just going to go off. And I'm going to set a 12 and a half minute timer. Here we go. And now, I wait. All right, my advances are about done. So now we're going to try and figure out how many advances happened. And if I overshot, it's okay. You know, you don't want to overshoot, right? That's why I aimed, you know, a bit under. But hopefully I'm within a few hundred at this point. Uh, on top of that, luckily I have another one, you know, a few hundred away. So if I could get that, that'd be fine too. Okay, so I'm going to delete my pattern here. Make sure my current state is correct and click generate pattern. Now I'm going to do my input sequence as I did before. All right, it looks like it advanced 3773. So we're probably still a little bit over a thousand frames away. Let's see here. Oh, well, let's send that over to state zero and one and search. So yeah, we're, we're about 868 uh, away, which is fine. Uh, you know, it is not an exact science. I'm sure my controller is not, you know, super duper perfect. So what we're going to do is do probably like... If, if it was 362 on one minute, uh, two minutes, uh, <laughs> two minutes is going to be uh, 724. That's, yeah, I think two minutes. We, we, we could probably go like a two minute and 10 second timer. Uh, give that another whirl. All right, we are done again, and let us try and re-identify. So let's delete the pattern, generate, give it another go. It's zero, zero, one, 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 one. All right. 674 were advanced so let's update the states and hit search so now we're only 194 away which is you know it is not very far so i i mean the bicycle was doing about 20 per what i could do is like three bikes and see how that goes one Two, three. Let's see. All right, so we have already updated that. Delete that. Regenerate the pattern. And let's see what we get. All right, that advanced about 42 doing three bike inputs. So let's see again. So we're really close. 42 doing three. Hmm. Uh, I could do like six more. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. All right, let's see. Hopefully I don't overshoot. When you get this close, you got to be really careful about overshooting, so I, I could have done so, you know what I mean? All right, that advanced 77. So we are really, really close now. So what I would do at this point is I'm going to do 60 advances, so I'm going to open up the calculator again. I'm going to go back out into the other menu, and I'm going to do 60 advances. Uh, so we're going to do 1 plus 1. And then the way I do this is just I just re repeatedly add 1 for every time I hit the button, so that's 1, 2, and then I'm just going to go 4, 5, six. Sixty. All right, we're at 65 advances now. So let's go back into the summary. Uh, and so we should only have 10 left. And so uh, I, I could do the calculator again. Uh, actually, let me move it over here to you. So we only have 10 advances left, and you can't do it the fast way here. But in my experience, finishing your advances in this menu cause it to be slightly more consistent. So, we're gonna, not sure if that's true or like in, you know, a myth or what have you, but uh, I, I find that it's a bit more consistent when you end here. So, part of the problem is closing the menu causes sometimes a random amount of advances to occur. And in my experience, closing the menu starting from here rather than the sub menu of the party uh, causes it to be a little bit more consistent. So we're going to aim for 75 here and see what we got. Now, you can't know typically how many advances you're going to be getting uh, when you close a menu like this. You just you just can't know. So you're just going to have to test and miss for yourself your first time if you're getting any at all. And then you could just adjust next time. You knew, okay, I got three last time. So, you know, I will aim three early, etc. Stuff like that, right? So, and if we could see here, it says animation one. So frame 75 should be a special animation. So let's see. So I'm going to land on 75, so. And one more. All right, so 75 was a special animation. So now what we're going to do is close the menus and just run without biking directly up to Amora. And if we did everything right, it could be shiny. And there we have it. A shiny Amora. This both confirms our trainer ID and secret ID were correct and taught us how to do an RNG advancement. Now, like I said, this area is fully quiet. There is no... Uh, there is no... What's it called? Like any random advancement, right? Like I've talked about going into the, you know, the cavern back there would cause some amount of random advancements. Um, but this area doesn't have them. But a lot of areas in the wild area do. And, and Pokemon existing in general can cause some random advancements, right? Uh, and because of that... Um, let me actually switch to a Pokemon who can catch this guy. Uh, and because of that, what we're going to have to do is work on... Uh, uh, we're gonna have to learn how to deal with that when we are encountering our, you know, our actual more important targets than just a random shiny Amora. And I'm going to uh, talk about how to deal with that in a, a new video where I'm gonna cover uh, all of the ways that you could potentially deal with, you know, noisy areas basically. And I'm gonna I'm gonna cover each wild area I think and you know a few different routes. But first I'm gonna catch the Amora to confirm that. We did, in fact, I didn't get just insanely lucky, uh, and we did, in fact, catch the correct uh, uh, Pokemon. So let's take a look at Amora's summary. So Amora is male, which, if you can see down here, um, uh, is the gender, M. We are looking for a calm nature. That is what it is. It was a square shiny, as we talked about. Uh, it ended on animation one. And if we take a... We, we can't see the stats here, um, but uh, it doesn't have a mark either, I don't believe. 
And so as you can see, this is this is certainly the Amora we've got. That means my trainer ID and secret ID that we found was fully correct, and we successfully learned how to do the overworld RNG. So now you can tackle more interesting targets or anything like that that you that you could want. Right? You could you could we're gonna be able to do more um advanced RNG manipulations in this game. We know how many advancements occur in different areas and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do uh is uh, have a, another video dedicated just to how to deal with random advancements in the overworld uh, and, you know, how to catch Pokemon in some busier areas. Uh, so, I hope this was a useful guide for all of you. Uh, if you enjoyed it and if it was helpful for you, please uh, consider subscribing or becoming a channel member by clicking the join button down below. It's only $1.99 a month. It gives you access to my videos early uh, and it gives you access to a special section of my Discord and it gives you access to emotes that you can use in my YouTube comments or in my YouTube live streams. Um, if you guys are, uh, if you guys enjoyed this, I'm going to be live streaming some Sword and Shield Overworld RNG on Tuesday. So please, uh, Tuesday the, uh, Tuesday the 14th. So look out for that. Um, and if you have any questions or anything like that, please leave them in the comments below or join my Discord where, uh, I or other people will be able to help you. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye. I want to do a big shout out to all of my channel members. Thank you guys so much. Without your support, I wouldn't be able to put out as many videos as I am. I wouldn't be able to stream as often as I am. And I wouldn't be able to have the quality of videos that I do. With your guys' support, let's be put out as much as I have been lately. And I want to do a big special shout out to Shadow Blitz 56 the Blist God tier member. You are an absolute goddamn legend. Thank you so much. If you guys want to support the channel in this way, you can click the join button down below. It's only $1.99 a month. You get access to my videos early, and you get access to a bunch of other perks like special uh, room in my Discord, special emotes that you can put in the videos or that you can put in uh, the YouTube chats, and other content such as like scripts or bonus content or anything like that. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.